All right, this is 2014, question three. Uh, now, as you guys should know, the third question is usually a rotation question. And as far as rotations go, this was probably one of the more uh, straightforward and easier of the rotations, since technically only half of the question actually deals with rotations. Now, some of you guys might remember this, so this should be fairly straightforward. All right. The first part says derive an expression for the length of time it will take for the stone to strike the ice. Now, right here I want to actually mention something. Just because a problem is rotations doesn't mean that you have to always use rotations. They like to do this because remember, physics is connected. Every topic is connected. So even if this is technically a rotations question, it doesn't mean that they can't throw in a kinematics question or a... Um, energy question, or in this case, a mo uh, or a momentum question. In this case, it's kinematics. In fact, when this person throws the ball and it hits the ice, this is a horizontal projectile motion. So they want to know the time it takes for the stone to strike the ice. Well, you should remember that the time it takes is all dependent on the y direction. So we look at the y side. Well, it starts at some height, which is, uh, where is the height? Oh, just the height h. Okay, that's good to know. Starts at a height h, thrown with the initial velocity v0. It's experiencing an acceleration of g, negative g. All right, uh, let's use x equals v0 plus 1 half at squared h equals, wait, Oops, that's my mistake. I actually made a mistake just like you guys. And I can't get rid of it. So, this is not a vertical velocity. That's a horizontal velocity. That was my mistake. Now, the reason I remembered was because I remember that when I'm dealing with the horizontal projectile motion, when I use the x, x side or the y side, one of these two should drop out. In this case, since I'm using the y side, I know this has to go to zero. That's why I knew I was wrong, that the initial velocity should have been equal to zero. All right, so from there, h equals 1 half gt squared. And there's my answer. And this was actually two points. One point for getting the answer. And one point for basically realizing that you have to use kinematics and only use the y side. Alright, now it says that the disc is now free to slide on the x. And they want us to drive an expression for the speed of the block and the disc, blah, blah, blah. Again, free to slide, speed after the ball is thrown, this is a collision, so initial equals final. Total momentum, this is of the, going to be disc plus person, let's call this, let's just call it V minus the, was it stone, v0, alright, this is 0, mass of the disc is going to be m, mass of the person is half m, I, I'm having a hard time seeing it, so I'll just say it's that. And then the stone is M20, zero. Move some things around, yada, yada, yada. And we end up getting, we can actually drop in, actually I won't do that right now. So we'll have, okay, dropping M from this. 
one and a half, that's three halves. Three halves, so that's going to be two thirds times one over twenty. B. This close that with that, leaving with ten. So that means that it's going to equal to one over thirty. B zero. So final velocity is going to be a thirtieth of your original of the stone's velocity. Alright. And there we go. This was three points. Again, one point for stating this. Uh one point for substituting in the stone's momentum. And one point for stating in this. Um, and that is basically it. Um, now, technically, if you look on the answer sheet, it says that this is a negative velocity, but since it specifically asks for speed, you don't have to worry about that sign. So that's actually, um, don't worry about that. All right, so for this one, they want us to find time. All right, so multiple ways to do this. I'm going to do kinematics. So I'm going to use old trusty. Oh, don't want to use that one. That's the timeless equation. Now I want to use. Let's use the. Let's use this one. Because I'll know what the final velocity is. That's zero. I already know what the initial velocity is, that's 1 30th of the zero. The only one that I don't know though, is I don't know what the acceleration is. Well, I could figure that out since I know, again, according to this, there's going to be a frictional force going that direction. There's Fg, there's Fn. I know if net force is going to be equal to ma. The net force is the frictional force, which is mu fn, which is mu mg, which is going to be equal to ma. That drops out. A equals mu g. Technically a negative, but again, that's technically negative. So we end up getting. that as our answer. All right. Uh this was 3 points. 1 point for doing this. Then we get 1 point for this basically using kinematics and our initial velocity from there and then getting an answer that makes sense with our previous work. Again, each of these problems, each of these parts they all depend on the previous part. Uh, part. All right. Now we're going to actually do something a little bit different this time. Now we get into the rotations. They want to know what is the angular speed of the disc immediately after the stone is thrown. All right. So let's start this off. First, I know this. Angular momentum. I know that initially it's zero. And I know that as far as the angular momentum afterwards, that's composed of the angular momentum of the disk. I know it's composed of the angular momentum of the man. Uh, let me actually call him person. And I know it's also the angular momentum of the rock, of the stone. All three of those make up the angular momentum. 
the disc is easy. We know that the rotational inertia of the disc is one half m r squared. And it's going to have a rotational inertia of omega. The person, well, the person is a mass moving in a circle. Moving in a circle. You should remember that for those, the rotational inertia is just m r squared. But it's going to end up being, because his mass is half r squared. Remember, his mass is half mass. And he also rotates with omega. And then we have the stone, which again has... Um, we can actually... We can either use this, or we can remember that for, again, for a mass moving linearly, we can say that its rotational inertia is just equal to MVR. We talked about this before, but it's something that we can do. Again, even though technically it's not rotating, it's moving linearly, we could talk about it the moment after it gets thrown as essentially being rotational. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to say that this is M over 20 um, V0 R. So I'm using all this and plugging it in for that. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, okay. Where should I start? Let me do this. Um, 20. Oh, that doesn't belong there. E zero R equals half m r squared plus half m r squared times omega And there we go for the answer. Again, this asks for speed, so I don't have to worry about sign. Um, and double checking, this makes sense because you should remember that the relationship between the angular and linear speeds was given by this equation. So unit-wise, this makes sense. Now, point-wise, what you end up getting is, once again, one point for stating that, angular momentum, um, one point for knowing the stone's angular momentum, one point for knowing the person's angular momentum, and one point for knowing the disc's angular momentum. And there we go. That was it. Alright, so from here, what you can do, you can do one of two ways. You can actually do the calculation again, where now this is going to be your radius for both, and this is the important thing, for both the stone and the man. Or you could think of it this way. So again, um, you know, we know that the rotational inertia of the stone, or angular momentum, sorry, the angular momentum of the stone is going to be equal to the angular momentum of the disc plus the angular momentum of the person. Well, for the most part, I'm decreasing the stone's rotational inertia by bringing it in closer towards the center. I'm decreasing it. I'm also decreasing the man's rotational inertia. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, rotational inertia. All right, now let's see what, now the thing that's important is that not only am I decreasing the stone's rotational inertia, but I'm keeping its speed constant, which means that its angular momentum is all going down, which means in total, the angular momentum must go down here. Now, just like in the, uh, one of the previous problems that we've done, uh, because these two are being added together, 
and the rotational inertia of this one's going down, but this one's remaining the same. That means that the angular speed also needs to go down to compensate for the fact that only this part's going down. Um, now if you don't believe me, you can see that. So before we had um, mv squared mvr equals um, half mr squared. plus half mr squared. If you're wondering why I have a big R and a little r, the little r is going to be plugged in with that in a second. Um, there's an m in each one of these, so boom, boom, boom. Uh, oh, that should be over 20. There's a half here, boom, boom. Turn that into 10. So end up having v0 over 10 times r over 2 equals r squared plus r over 2 squared. So we end up getting v0 r over 20 equals r squared plus 1 fourth r squared, which is just fourths r squared r crosses out that r um let's see this four turns that into a five move some things around and you end up getting omega is equal to v zero over twenty five r which if you remember from before it was v zero over 20R. So, decreasing the radius decreases the total angular momentum of the system, which means that um, the angular speed of the disk and the person have to be le uh, have to also decrease because the man's um, rotational inertia decreases, but the disk doesn't. So, it's going to end up being less than. Um, and basically, the points here is one point for realizing it's less than, one point for realizing that the stone decreases, and then um, one point for realizing that the rotational inertia of the person decreases as well. And then, and proper ex explanation. And that's about it for this problem. If you have any questions, let me feel free to ask me.